next one to dance to the podium is the Honourable Member for Rosevears. Um, thank you, Mr President. It's good to be here. In fact, uh, it's good to be anywhere. Um, <laughs> um, I, do, uh, I do want to thank the Member for Hobart for um, uh, presenting my special interest speech uh, three weeks ago. Uh, when I was uh, unable to be here, and uh, it was so interesting because it was about um, uh, organ donations, and, <laughs> and, and not that anybody would want mine. However, uh, but I, I might point out that I am now uh, an organ donor. Um, but uh, I would probably like to recount the uh, course of events uh, on that Thursday morning. I suppose, in some ways, I wanted to deliver uh, a warning, but also give some advice in light of the experience that I had. And the first thing I want to make clear, Mr President, is that because of some brilliant medical advances over the past few years, I am now fit, uh, although I do have that little uh, wire mesh in uh, one of my arteries known as a stent. And uh, I've learned to love stents. Uh, there are a good number of Tasmanians, of course, who are walking around with stents in their bodies and without them they would be dead. Uh, so I can consider myself fit. I'm looking to uh, build my fitness again. I'm intending to walk a lot and uh, go to the gym. Okay. Often, uh, as I did on that, uh, on that last sitting day of uh, uh, earlier this month, Thursday the 5th of June, I went to the gym here in Parliament and then uh, went back to Berrydale and uh, I was aware of a tightening in my chest and phoned my GP in Launceston uh, he's a very cautious and prudent doctor. In fact, a year ago, he sent me off to have a test for shortness of breath and my red complexion, uh, but nothing showed up in those tests. But uh, he said, don't muck around, Kerry. Be on the safe side. Call an ambulance immediately. Uh, I did so. It came quickly, although I would argue that uh, really up-to-date NAT SAVs should be in all Tasmanian ambulances. Sat, 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 sat. Yeah, thank you. Just wanted to see if you were listening. Thank you. I've got your attention. Uh, but uh, they were searching for me a little bit. I could see them driving past up and round streets and I didn't want to get too excited. But, uh, but the, quicker, the, quicker the, uh, the quicker the response, of course, the more that lives will be, will be saved. And that was in the morning, not in the evening. That's right, that's right. But uh, I did have though, the highly efficient and calming paramedic who put me through a series of tests and then uh, said that, no, we've got to go to the accident emergency section of the Royal Harvard Hospital. I thought, well, it's, it's a hell of a fuss, as men do, but uh, I'll follow instructions. Um, the A&E section uh, was alerted by radio and were ready to deal with me uh, when I arrived. I was very calm about it because of the calmness of everybody. I just didn't get excited at all, but I have been informed on Monday that it was really quite an emergency and everybody was prepared along the way, A&E and also uh, the, the, uh, the, the surgeon uh, was on standby. Um, I, uh, not many people know about the brilliant techniques that save lives in cardiac units, but, uh, but they should. I'll just explain the technique briefly. A wire is pushed up, pushed up my arterial system uh, through my wrist, although there is an option to go in through the groin, but I did prefer the wrist. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> a narrowed artery was found, I thought, I thought near my heart. That's why I'm quite relaxed about the whole procedure. I thought it was near my heart. They just found an artery, blah, blah, blah. On Monday, when I went to the rehabilitation area at the LGH, they, he tells me, no, the artery was actually in my heart. So I, the stent is actually placed uh, inside my heart. Um, the technique is to uh, artificially pop open the narrowed artery by inserting a stent. The stent is a little mesh tube, a metal tube. It's only about two millimetres wide with a balloon inside it and that's pushed up the wire with a catheter tube. The balloon is then expanded. It widens the mesh of the stent so it fits the width of the artery. But because it's quite strong against the artery, and it melds into whatever was gunking the place up, like cholesterol and all that sort of stuff. It actually sits there and is held uh, in the artery. Uh, so uh, when it's withdrawn, everything else comes out, but the stent is, uh, the stent is then left in place. 
Uh, then I was into the ward and I must say the attention was quite fantastic, just every 15 minutes uh, being checked on and uh, for, the, for that 24 hours. So I'm really grateful to those brilliant professionals at the Royal Hubbard Hospital, uh, the interns, the nurses, the people in accident emergency, um, the staff, highly trained, sympathetic and very professional. And uh, of course, thanks to uh, Dr. Phil Roberts Thompson, the name I know because his father is quite, uh, has been quite a famous name. Harold Roberts Thompson? From Ireland, yes. Is that right? Oh, yes. The competing electorates here today. But uh, Philip Robert Thompson was very calming and uh, very professional, and uh, I'm, I owe a debt of gratitude to him. But uh, this is why Australia want this adequately funded public health system, uh, because it can save your life, Mr President. Um, about a, a last Thursday, and this is just to give you by way of an example, last Thursday I had a call from England. I was over there in the early 70s. And I, I knocked about with a chap called Kevin Gannon, a good mate of mine, and we went to supported Manchester United for a year and a half all over England. And uh, he works at the Wigan Infirmary. And he came home feeling unwell, as, as I did, uh, spoke to his wife. Um, she said, get an ambulance. And he said, oh, no, by the love, don't worry, don't worry, love. I'll be right, I'll be right. She said, well, you must make an appointment with a doctor, which he did, but he worked at the hospital. Not a problem. He died overnight. He died overnight from heart complications, simply because he didn't take that precaution. He was 63. And uh, the message is, don't muck around, call an ambulance. It's what they're there for. Speaking with a friend of yours, uh, Graham Lynch, Mr President, from the Heart Foundation, uh, he said that uh, uh, nearly 10,000 people present to our public hospital emergency departments every year with warning signs of heart attack, which are then diagnosed as heart-related conditions. And 56% arrive by ambulance and 44% get there through other non-urgent means. But close to 30% are under 50 years of age. And something that, uh, that I might point out too is that from the, from the Launceston Cardiac Unit they say that very, very rarely is there a false alarm when people come because of a concern about tingling in the arms or pain in the chest or in their neck. Very, very rarely is it a false alarm. Um, but probably my advice, if you're 45 years and over, as some of you are, 35 years or over, if you're an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander, ask your GP for a health heart check to find out your risk of having a heart attack. And also, another word of advice, we're killing ourselves with our knives and forks. As I heard about, you know, we've just got to lessen our portions of food, be very careful about what we eat. And uh, you might be surprised to learn that heart disease is the si biggest single killer of Australian women. Uh, women. Um, but, uh, <coughs> and, oh, and, uh, yeah, but, but it's the, and men too, probably, yeah. Might be, yes, I didn't get that information from Graham. I'll speak to him about that in his discrimination against men. Um, but uh, most Tasmanians can be at risk of a heart attack, Mr President. We must recognise the symptoms and, above all, act quickly. Again, it's good to be here.